before the video begins, please subscribe because because my goddamn fingers hurt. Thank you. Before before all this starts, I'm going to completely ignore the fact about the server issues that Payday 3 had at launch and the lack of offline mode that it has at the moment. Because at this point, literally everybody knows because it's a sore thumb that it sticks out. And before any of you glue, snoo glue, glue sniffers out there saying that I'm dick riding Payday 3, this is simply my opinion on Payday 2 and Payday 3. Sure. I am biased about Payday 3, but that doesn't mean I see the game as perfect as its own, because there are some issues, there are some problems that the game has that require some tweaking, or that require some sort of quality of life changes, but I'm not going to be talking about that because this video is already going to be long enough. Secondly, I'm also going to be ignoring the pre-planning sections, the stealthing sections, and the progression sec sections. I am mainly going to talk about uh, these things. The loud side, aka gunplay and gameplay, movement, and I'm also going to be talking about the variety. Uh, as that's where the fun comes in from the both games. So, when it comes to Payday 2 and Payday 3, there are a lot of differences between the two games. They are like siblings that are different from one another. They both have their own little personalities, but a lot of people see them as the same and treat them the same way. The older one, being Payday 2, is far more relaxed, ch charming, and chill, while the other one on the other hand, that being Payday 3, is far more arrogant, stubborn, and serious. But because of a lot of people are treating them the same way, it, it sort of causes a little bit of confusion between the two games. Because despite the two games having their own little differences and their own little mechanics, a lot of people tend to treat it as it's the same way. And that's a wrong way to see it. Firstly, I'm going to be talking about the main feeling, or aka the vibe and how the game should be treated of, as I want to keep it for short. Payday 2 is a far more comedic, and it doesn't really take itself too seriously, and it far more focuses on horde shooting and running around. And I know some of you are going to be saying, well, what about like taking mm, a little bit back and relaxing? Sure, there are some moments, but majority of the time you're just spending uh, your time running around and horde uh, shooting lots of hordes without having to worry about anything. Meanwhile, Payday 3, on the other hand, takes itself a little bit more seriously, but not to the point where it becomes very depressing. It mostly focuses on, on team working together, as the game is far more crowded and prioritizes on the, taking the gameplay much more slower than Payday 2. This is because the enemies being uh, uh, intentionally tankier and being slightly harder to kill. Because let's not forget about the vibe of, of, the, of the game. They're both two different things. Payday 2 is far more com is more of an arcade shooter. Payday 3, on the other hand, focuses more on grounded gameplay, to say at least. So, let's talk about the two important things that a lot of people tend to exa over exaggerate. Firstly, let's talk about the movement. A lot of people have a common argument saying that the Payday 3's movement feels clunky, and slow, or not responsive, which is the most stupid shit I've ever heard in my life. The primary reason uh, qu the quote-unquote is sluggish, it's purposely slower because that's how the devs want it to be. Because the game, the devs wanted the game to be more slower, and it somewhat makes sense for the game to feel slightly slower. But but the reason I'm, I'm going to take a guess and say that a lot of people say the game feels slow, it's because of the heavy armor they wear 99% of the time. Literally, everybody is wearing it at this point, but I'm not going to say anything. But as for someone who has been playing the game for more than 200 hours, the movement has never really felt any sort of sluggish, clunky, or any way possible. Sliding and vaulting mechanic are very, very responsive, and it generally feels like they can, it can help you a lot, because of their faster responses. At first it may seem clunky when you first play the game, but eventually you will get used to it to the point where it becomes very smooth. The same thing with Payday 2, it can feel a little bit weird at times, but eventually you'll get used to it. But the running and basic movement feels very smooth and very quickly, and there is no delay when it comes to like performing a slide or vaulting or run or starting to run. So people saying that it's not responsive is a little bit odd, and it honestly makes me think that they aren't even playing the game to fucking begin with, and so they're just, just sniffing their asses at this point. But I'm, the reason I'm guessing a lot of people are assuming that the game feels slower, it's because they're used to Payday 2's a more fast pace to say at least, and therefore are not used to Payday 3's of a slower pace. Payday 2's movement on the other hand is very basic and very simple. There's no complicated movement like vaulting or sliding, but it's simple and it feels solid and responsive. But the only complaint I have is the jumping is a little bit unpredictable, because there's a hidden mechanic. What do I mean by this? Well, 
uh, whenever you jump for the second time, this second jump is always higher than the first, allowing you to reach a certain objects or certain barriers you won't normally be able to climb on. This sounds nice on paper, but when it comes to scenarios where you won't, don't have enough time to jump for the second time, and you realize you don't really have enough like jumping height to jump over a specific uh, the gate or whatnot, it can be sometimes frustrating, but whatever. But uh, the basic movement like crouching, running, jumping between the two games, it feels smooth and responsive, they're not really complicated, they're not sluggish, I don't know why people are making it dramatic, but whatever. Slide and the thing is, combine sliding and vaulting to the mix on Payday 3 makes it even better, because sliding allows you to move a little bit faster than your base running speed normally for a short duration allowing you to reach a cover to cover much more easier or taking cover it when you're out in the open. Vaulting just simply allows you to uh, jump over behind railings or to take behind cover or jump over something you wouldn't normally uh, be able to do without jumping. Alright, so let's get into the gunplay section where we will be talking about and then eventually we'll talk about the uh, enemies. The gunplay, I see a lot of uh, people in Payday 3 say that it's pretty good, it's solid, it's responsive but there are some people that say that the gunplay in Payday 3 are a little bit sluggish, and I will get into that a little bit. But firstly, let's talk about Payday 2. The gunplay in Payday 2 is very simple and very good. 95% of the weapons in Payday 2 are viable in Death Sentence difficulty. Do not let the degenerate one, one down mask wearers say that th this weapon is bad, or this sniper rifle is bad, or this assault rifle SMG is bad, and etc. etc. Because Literally 95% of the weapons are really good in Payday 2 and are viable in Death Sentence difficulty. But the only bad weapons I can say are bad in Payday 2 are the bows and the crossbows. And maybe the M. Caro sword rifle, aka the beginner's rifle. But other than that, every weapon in Payday 2 are really worth in Death Sentence difficulty and they don't really have any sort of like um, delays when you're like a. Uh, Switching to weapon, switching your primary to secondary, or whenever you're aiming down sides, or whenever you're trying to switch, like they're very fast and very quick because of the fast pace of the of the game, and so there's no like modifications that reduces aiming down speed, running to shoot speed, and whatnot and whatnot, and it's very fast and it makes it uh, easier for you to modify however you want without making the weapons feel very clunky in certain way possible. Payday 3, on the other hand, actually no, it's a bit too early. They are affected because they also have the capability of take, taking between one or three shots to kill a single enemy with the right skills. But it also has the capability of killing ten or more enemies with a single magazine, if the player has good enough aim, to say at least. Every enemy feels extremely fragile, and occasionally a fucking laughing stop because they're so easy to kill, but we will talk about that later on. Payday 3, on the other hand, hand it takes it between uh, 2 to 4 shots to kill an enemy. This is likely because of the slower pace of the game that it has, and it forces players to actually genuinely aim for the head, instead of constantly focusing on the body on Payday 2. Because in Payday 2, there is a specific call skill called um, Body Expertise. And on Aced version, it allows you to do, I think, either 90 or 100% of the damage you do on the head applied to the body. Thus allowing you to kill an enemy with, like, one or two shots essentially, but this is not the case with Payday 3 because of the enemies having body armor and the lack of body expertise. But many people, cl uh, uh, but there are certain people that I s heard and I somewhat saw that claim that the weapons are weak and not powerful enough to kill an enemy, which is the most absurd shit I have ever heard in my life. Firstly, Every weapon in Payday 3, except the Ziv Commando SMG, are very strong and are capable of uh, killing multiple enemies with one magazine if the player has good enough aim and the right skills. Because, because of the enemies having more or being more tankier and slightly harder to kill, a lot of people are assuming that the guns are weak, when in reality they are not. There are so many skills that allow you to do bonus damage and it's not just edge. Like that one uh, skill in the ammo tree that lets you do bonus damage when you uh, pick up ammo, or that one specific skill tree that increases your armor penetration. Fun fact, the more armor penetration you have, the more damage you do, essentially. So allowing you to kill enemies much more easier. Or that one skill that allows you to do 10% extra damage when you're like 5 meters within an enemy, and so on and so on. There are so many skills that increases the bonus damage, and it's not just edge that gives you the bonus damage. So you have to sort of think of how... Uh, like, 
Like, you have to really think of how are these skills going to affect your weapon, essentially. You have to really think of, is it going to have a huge impact, to say at least. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that every weapon is capable of killing enemies, like, really easily, with two or three shots in the head. Of course, as the heist goes on and the enemies start to wear heavier armor, it does take a slightly more time to kill, but it's not to the point where they are unkillable. Like, they're still really easy to kill, but it takes a little bit more effort. But it's not, like, annoying tank, to, to say the least. It's not like you're, like, blasting 50 rounds into a person and they're still alive. It's, it's a little bit... You need to put a little bit of effort, but it's not really that difficult, to say the least. They, they still are really easy to kill. But I'm not entirely sure where people get this really idea of weapons being weak, when in reality all of them are really powerful and effective without any issues. But I'm guessing people are complaining about guns being weaker due to the game having a actual dro damage drop-off mechanic. And I know some of you are going to say, well, Payday 2 does have damage drop-off, but that shit is so fucking ignorable. Like, it's so forgettable. Like, the damage drop-off mechanic is so pointless in Payday 2. Like, it doesn't even matter because it's so it's barely noticeable meanwhile in payday 3 it's actually like it feels like your weapon does less damage in the distance but another reason i'm guessing a lot of people are complaining about guns being weak it's because of the enemies actually taking cover when being shot at because believe it or not whenever an enemy is being shot at whether they got hit or not they will actually try to run away or try to make their bodies like be harder to hit like they'll try to hide behind cover they'll try to like run away and whatnot to say at least thus making it harder for them to be killed and the reason i know that they are affected is because i use all of them on destiny's difficulty with different builds and weapon attachments and trust me when i say this even with changing their attachments or changing my builds they all act the same way damage mo damage wise majority of the time and are still effective and another thing I need to mention is that a lot of people claim the weapon feels sluggish and very heavy and clunky, like switching speeds is slow, running to shoot is slow, or aiming down the sights is very slow. And a simple solution I have to this is the reason that some people say their weapons are sluggish, or that feel slow to carry and slow to aim and whatnot, comes from one thing and one thing only. Weapon attachments. You see, Weapon attachments have a very, despite being very simple and very bland, that some people uh, somewhat see. When I look at reviews of Payday 3, a lot of people have this, um, I'm not like uh, going against someone, like I'm not calling out someone or to say this, but when I see a lot of reviews on Payday 3, the most common thing I see is a lot of people have these like up uh, attachments that reduces the speed of aiming down sights, reducing the time to to uh, change to running to shooting or reduce to switching speed and so on and so on because people are blinded to are too fucking blinded to see the negative statistics that their weapons have they'll see like the negative stats and like huh this is nothing this doesn't really seem like it but when they find out that it's actually painfully slow then they'll start complaining about oh how the get oh how the guns feel sl clunky and sluggish to carry around and so the one problem I see a lot of people uh, make is that the weapons being clunky, which is absurd, when they are the ones using the most complicated fucking modifications that reduce their, uh, that reduce their statistics by abnormously high. Sure, it may reduce the, um, the recoil and make it, make the weapons, um, have a better handling, but you need to also realize that it re also reduces certain parts of the weapon, like aiming down sights, switching speed, and switch, and reducing the running to shoot. And there are skills that actually help you with increasing those um, those stats. And there are certain modifications that makes it easier. Like, do you want to go a build that focuses only on hip fire? Go ahead. Do you want to make a build that allows you to switch weapons extremely quick? Go ahead. Do you want a build that focuses on aiming down sights extremely quickly? There it is. It exists. But a lot of people use the same modifications that reduces these uh, stats and are complaining about how their weapons feel slow to carry, to say at least. Which is fucking odd, compared, uh, because the fact that they don't even pay attention to the, um, uh, they don't pay attention to the negative effects of it is is quite stupid. Payday 2's modification system, on the other hand, doesn't really have that much big of an impact. The only thing that can really change of the weapon is primarily 
the stability of the weapon, the accuracy, and sometimes the reload, and sometimes the concealment, and whatnot. Damage is... Yeah, it can sometimes be a hit or miss. Some weapons have modifications where it increases the damage a lot, to say at least, but there are some that don't. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that the modification system between the two games are very drastically different. And sure, despite the modification system in Payday 3 seem lackluster and that doesn't seem like it doesn't have much, it is to a point where it can change the weapon entirely in Payday 3. The same thing goes with Payday 2, but it doesn't really have that much big of an impact as Payday 3, in my opinion, of course. But enough of that. Let's forget about that complicated topic, which is already confusing my mind. Let's talk about the enemies. Payday 2 enemies are very dangerous and lethal to the player because of the higher number they have. Payday 2 focuses more, as I said earlier, on shooting hordes of cops and there are, like, and there are barely any situations where a corridor or a hallway are filled with only like two or five enemies or less, to say at least, because you are constantly uh, dealing with hundreds of cops per wave and hundreds of special enemies per heist to make it more interesting, because because of the higher number uh, they have, they are also extremely fragile to kill. And the only enemy I can think of that is somewhat hard to kill, that takes a little bit of effort, are the Medic and the Bulldozers. Well, Medic... Eh, maybe, I'm not sure. But but the point I'm trying to make is, is like the enemies in Payday 2 are more dangerous because of the higher numbers they have. And because Payday 2 focuses more on like an arcade shooter type, and more on horde shooters, it is... It makes it interesting for the players when they're like fighting hundreds of cops uh, per wave, to say at least. But Payday 3, on the other hand, focuses more on lower enemies and smarter enemies. Because they don't just simply barge in a fucking room and spread out like crazy like in Payday 2. They're more careful with how they approach you, and they, you sometimes see them like hiding behind shields. Maybe like three or five of them behind the shield. Sometimes you actually see them hiding behind cover waiting to ambush you, because they actually do that. A single enemy in Payday 3, if ignored, has the potential of dealing 50% of your armor chunk, well, dealing damage 50% of your armor chunk if it's, like, not taken care of quickly on overkill difficulty. Well, while Payday 2, on the other hand, a single enemy is just another fucking dirt under your boot to, to laugh at, to say at least. But the main reason that a lot of people say uh, Payday 3 feels tanky, it's mainly because... As I said earlier, the devs wanted to make it where the game is slower, and the players need to actually take their time to uh, play the game. But another reason I can say is that the fact that they hide behind cover much more often rather than being out in the open, and it, of course, it has a normal, normally has a slower time to kill than Payday 2 does. But the enemies are extremely easy to kill, to say at least, if you know what you're doing. But let's talk about the gameplay of it. The uh, let a lot of people that treat the enemies and, uh, and the gameplay of Payday 3 like it's Payday 2. I know this is because I've seen a lot of people where they mindlessly barge in a fucking room without any sort of second thought and get killed or downed by like three seconds, with by like two or three enemies, and then they'll start complaining about 90% of the time. And here's the thing that really pisses me off. There are some people that say that the assault waves are not entertaining when 90% of them are just spending their time in a single tiny room or in a fucking bathroom sitting there waiting until the end of the heist. And yet they have the audacity to say that the uh, assault waves are not engaging or they are not fun. And yet they are the same individuals that stay in the fucking bathroom until the very end of the assault and do fucking nothing 90% of the time. Why do I know this? It's because I've played Descendants Loud so many times in public on Payday 3, on Norwest for the Wicked, Touch the Sky, or even fucking... Uh, what's the name? Rock the Cradle, where everyone, and I mean everyone, they do nothing but sit in a fucking bathroom. Do nothing. All of them are just waiting there. Waiting for the cops to come, and meanwhile, I'm outside fighting every fucking New York police department. I'm literally out there fighting for my life, doing the objective, meanwhile, they're just sitting there, asses doing butt fuck nothing, and they're the same people that say the game is not engaging. I'm sorry, I'm getting out of topic. But the per point I'm really trying to make about the gameplay is Payday 3 requires you to have common sense. Common sense. Excuse me. 
which is something Payday fans fail to have, but I'm not going to complain. And it also needs a small bit of thought on how you take the fights. You can't just simply take every fight you see, but because you have to know when it's right, because on certain times, you have to wait for them to come towards you instead, instead of... Because a lot of the time when I see people uh, on, on, on during assaults, I see them chasing after cops, which is the most horrible thing you can do because at certain times when enemies realize that you're actually chasing after them they will actually wait for you they will actually take cover and if you try to chase after them you're just going to get ambushed and risk of losing a lot of armor and another thing to mention is if you try to fight enemies in the distance it may be effective but uh, you're running a risk of running ammo and because of the damage drop up that the game has it can make it somewhat harder to kill them and to, to simplify it, you need to have common sense and just have a small bit of thought. That's it. It's literally easy. On the other hand, Payday 2 just allows you to turn off your fucking brain and shoot anything that moves. Even if the enemies are far away, you can run up to them and kill them instantly without any sort of consequences. And even if the enemies are far away, they are so easy to kill. Ign like, the damage drop off is just forgettable at this point. But because Payday 2 focuses more on running around and killing ho hordes of cop, of course, there are moments where... Sure, you have to take it slow and not rush, and often times you have to sort of wait it out, to say at least. There are certain times, but majority of the time, you're just running around, cleaning rooms, cleaning hallways, and whatnot. This may seem like I'm just rambling in nonsense, but keep in mind I'm doing the best I can to sort of um, compare these two, because this is how I feel about the two games, to say at least. The big complaint I have of the variety of Payday 2 is, sure, Despite the game having a huge variety of weapons, a lot of the pro players, 90% or 95% of them, stick with the same weapons all the fucking time. The five most common weapons I see all the time, being the primary weapons, are the Contractor Sniper Rifle, the Isma Shotgun, the Akimbo Krenkovs, the Akimbo Brother Grimms, and the Lion's Roar. It's like, don't get me wrong. It's like... Hear me out on this. I understand that so that a lot of people can have a favorite gun. Like, I don't have any issue with that. But the problem is, these are the same people that say Payday 3 doesn't have enough gun variety. When they are the same individuals that use the same fucking guns all the time. They use the same shit all the time. And they don't even bother using the other weapons because they quote-unquote are not effective enough. And the thing is, they are also the same people that use the same fucking skills the same fucking builds and the same exact perks, the skills. The most common ones being Anarchist, Stoic, Lynch, or Lynch, uh, I don't know what the fuck it's called, Kingpin, and did I mention Stoic? I don't fucking know. But those are the most common uh, perks I see in every fucking match I host on Payday 2, or I used to, to say at least. Payday 3 on the other hand provides some good amount of variety perks. You can make a build that focuses on either close range engagements or no long range engagements or whatnot and whatnot. And yet you're able to use every weapon with these same with these same builds because you don't really need to remove a specific skill to make a specific weapon work. Because in Payday 2, in order to make a um, LMG or assault rifle effective, you need to have body expertise aced, and you need to have a berserker aced or a crit build in order to make them somewhat effective. And you need to, and if you want to make a pistol or shotgun effective, you need to remove those skills on the assault rifles that you have and put it on pistol skills, shotgun skills. You get what I'm saying. But this is not the same thing with Payday 3 because you can literally have the same build and use the same weapons. You don't really need to change your skills to make a specific weapon class effective. You can practically use every build you have and use different weapons and they'll still be effective, to say the least. You'll get the same results. Don't get me wrong, I don't have any hate for Payday 2, but what angers me is that people are not really comparing the two games a lot, to say the least, because the way they are quote-unquote comparing the game, it's because a lot of the time people are saying, oh, Payday 3 should have had this mechanic from Payday 2, or it should have had this mechanic from this, or why did they remove this mechanic, to say at least. The point of a sequel, and I'm going with my own definition, is it either expands the, expands the game's um, mechanics and their story and whatnot, it expands it to, like, to make it better or add something uh, different, to say at least. Or, or, it may... It, becomes a different game in 
entirely. And that's what Payday 3 is. Sure, there are some things that are from Payday 2, probably, I don't even fucking know, but the point I'm trying to make is Payday 3 is different. It is way different than Payday 3. And Payday 3 doesn't need to have certain mechanics from Payday 2. Like, it doesn't need the detection risk. It doesn't need dodge build. It doesn't fucking need perk builds. Or it doesn't need fucking... I don't know what else. It doesn't need to have these mechanics because it's going to be Payday 3 but with better graphics. That's what it's going to be. But people fucking fail to see that. Because they're too blinded by nostalgia of Payday 2, and they think, hmm, this game should have the same mechanic as uh, implemented to Payday 3. But that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is this, they're not supposed to have it. Payday 3 is trying to be its own thing. Its own identity. Even if it's like, even if the player count is like low at the moment, the game is supposed to be different from the prequel. To say at least. That's the point of a sequel. It's to be different from its older sibling. <sighs> Fucking hell, I'm sorry. I got a little bit out of topic. But another thing I need to also mention is the AI. People in Payday 2 rely on their AI a little bit too fucking much. Because of one... Or two things. The AI's tankiness and the AI's fucking boost. The reason Payday 2 solo mechanic, like playing solo, is easier and far more like far more superior, it's because of the AI's boosting system being fucking broken entirely. Because they're able, because 90% of the time they're better than actual players. The bots are literally better than actual players. Imagine that shit. An actual AI being better than a fucking actual player. And yet people in Payday 3 uh, say Payday 3 is like, oh the AI are, are not really that powerful. But if they are too powerful, the game's just going to be stale. The the reason, like, Payday 2 got boring when I played solo is because of the AI being too fucking overpowered. Because they have so many abilities that let you survive, or they do the dirty work for you, or they just outright, outright do the work for you. Like, they take all the attention, to say at least. And even if you're fumbling, they're just there to save your ass and ignore every bit of hit. And a lot of people fail to realize that Payday 3's AI are also a very helpful because they're on certain situations when an assault ends, they provide you with a medic bag, ammo bag, or a armor bag, depending on what type of um, uh, resources you need. But they're tanky to the point where they're not like bullet sponges, but they're just somewhat tanky enough to sort of um, sustain. Like they're able to handle themselves, but not like be able to like outright instantly kill like five enemies instantly, not like in Payday 2. They actually are able to kill, but it does take a little bit of time, to say at least. Sorry if the video feels a little bit rushed and a little bit complicated and a little bit um, messy, to say at least. This is my personal uh, interpretation when it comes to the two different games. And I know the progression system is wacky in Payday 3, but at this point it's really fucking obvious. I don't even need to talk about it. And I don't really need to talk about the stealthing part in between the two games because Payday 2 stealth fucking sucks miserably. Payday 3's stealthing section is better. That's it. That's all I can say. Payday 2's stealthing mechanic is just completely fucking dog shit. That's it. That's all I can say. As someone that hates stealthing, I actually do genuinely enjoy stealthing in Payday 3, but I prefer loud more often. Which is saying something to say at least. And I know you people are gonna bring up, well, the Payday 3 had server issues and it doesn't have offline mode. Yeah, I know. In the beginning, I literally said that I'm not going to be talking about this because it's such a fucking obvious thing at this point. And as much as I love uh, Starbreeze to add offline mode, I will make a video about offline mode on Payday 3 and I will get into much more better detail on when they should, like, add it, to say at least. But... This is simply my opinion on how I feel about the two different games and how people fail to really compare. Because a lot of the time when people quote unquote are trying to compare the two games, it's just rambling about how oh, Payday 3 doesn't have this mechanic from Payday 2, or how it should have been like this, it should have been like that, and I don't fucking know what else. When the point is, they're trying to be different. Star Priest is trying to make Payday 3 a different game than Payday 2. And. Before some of you say, well, it should have been better at launch. Well, I know, but here's the thing. The re only reason Payday 2's got popular is because it got 10 years of development. Because at release, it was fucking horrible. It was one of the most atrocious fucking games to ever exist when it first released. The AI, AI was terrible. 
the fucking AI were like really unpredictable. There weren't really much to do. Leveling is were, were tedious, but they improved it. They improved it for 10 years. And I hate comparing two games that are like de like years different to say the least. But um, the point I'm trying to make is they're different. And people should respect it that way. But people fail to realize that. Because they're too busy trying to make Payday 3 become more modernized version of Payday 3. Or, or Payday 2, pardon. And that's something we shouldn't be doing. But can we do anything about it? No. Because the Payday fans are already questionable enough to see at least. A lot of the time they're just so... A lot of them are weird. I have no hate on the Payday community, but... There are like certain things where they're like making me question humanity at this point, but... This is probably going to be a controversial video, but I honestly couldn't give two singular fucks, so... If you enjoyed the video... Uh, thank you. For listening. Even if you somewhat uh, stopped halfway... But if you did, like, listen a half an hour of me rambling, I appreciate it. I'm just trying to get this out of my chest because there's so much fucking thoughts going through my head and it's kind of hard to keep up to what I'm really talking about. Even writing a script, it makes things harder for me because, like, I'm just constantly thinking about this. What if I have not talked about this and whatnot? But I'm going out of top again. But this is how I feel about the two different games and I feel like that's how people should be treating it. They should actually compare rather than saying how this game should have had this and whatnot. People need to treat these two games as different, but people try to t treat it as like they're, they're the same. So, yeah. That's all I have to offer. Fucking hell. Uh, I don't really know what else to say to, to talk about. But if you have any sort of like questions or any sort of like um, complaints or any sort of like things you want to talk about, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to sort of talk back or give out my personal opinion on your questions, your talks, or your thoughts and comparison and whatnot. So, let me know down in the comments. And of course, subscribe because my f goddamn fingers hurt. So, um, adios.